Hello everyone and welcome back to the channel. We are back in competitive action today with a trip to Div 2 side Burgess Hill in the first round of the T20 Cup. Just the one change today from last week's friendly against Cookfield. George Cave is back and he replaces Ollie Brown. Of course Joe loses the toss and we were stuck into bat first on a slightly soft pitch. The host looking to do early damage with the ball to restrict us and chase it down later. The first job though will be to get rid of these two opening up for us. Ross taking one and Kiwi overseas Boyle at two. Russ starting nicely and that is an absolutely exquisite lofted drive from the opener. You can tell his home ground is three bridges where our boundaries are so short straight. But that one sails over the rope for a maximum. <laughs> that boy has gone over the clubhouse. <laughs> Shot! Yeah, that sounds about right, Floydy. Susan advances and whips that off his legs over the clubhouse for another maximum, <laughs> taking us on to 33 for no loss. Boyle not connecting this time and that ball takes his top of off stump to dismiss him for 15. So the score is 46 for one in the fourth over and next up to the crease is Connor Golding. Russ first smashes that no ball for four, but the free hit doesn't make the final edit. Con then is beaten by a no ball, but does make the free hit count. And after the six over power play, we're 64 for one. Those late over changes in the scoreboard combined with no play cricket, ball by ball, making this tough work for the commentator. That one sticks a little, Russ mistimes the shot and he's caught in the ring. Four fours and a six in his 34 today. A good start, but just couldn't kick on. Next in and fresh from last week's pad rash, we've got new signing Scott Lenham. Oh, yeah, 
So after seven overs, we're 66 for two, ticking over at just short of 10 runs and over. A good start on not the easiest track to bat on. Those dots creating a bit of pressure outside the power play and that brings the wicket for Burgess Hill. Connor holds out to long on and he's on his way for 14. Next up and another we didn't get to see in the middle last week, new signing Michael Cowdery who joins from Seven Oaks in Kent. So what's the link and how do we get his signature? Well, Cowdery had the unfortunate luck of meeting Joe and Aaron at Union Cardiff and they convinced him to come over to the Barker Meads this year. Great networking chaps. Scotty Lenham, another one to hole out, trying to keep us going through the middle overs, but not getting all of that one. And here he is, the skipper himself in next, still using a bat he acquired off Dozer from a few years ago. It's been a long winter for Joe, but we're finally seeing him out at the middle once again. Having already played it nicely, Cowdery gets this switch hit even better, and that somehow goes all the way for six. Absolutely worth another view. So after 12 overs, I believe, the Bridges are 96 of two and hopefully on our way to setting a decent score here today. Quick shout out to these three lads, huge fans of the channel and we're buzzing that we are down at their ground. Thanks for the kind words boys and we hope you enjoy the vid. Some very useful boundaries for Mikey and that sees us up to 124 for four in the 16th over. Keep going here in 150, well beyond the cards. Joe doesn't get that one fine enough and his support role comes to an end. 
Simple catch down at fine leg, and he goes for 10 runs today. Aaron Brown to the crease now, and with only a couple overs left, we sat nicely at 144 for five after 18 overs. And that single brings up Mike Cowdery's 50 on his first time at the middle for three bridges. A great start in green and gold, including plenty of boundaries to keep that score ticking up through the middle overs. Aaron stuck in the treacle there, short of his ground coming back for the second off the final ball. Play cricket had us finishing on 157 for six from our 20. A good start from our openers, but the innings very much made by Mike Cowdery coming in at five and ending on 57 not out. Some fine scampering between the wickets and some impressive switch hits in that knock today. So Burgess Hill needing 158 to win and progress to the next round. On this deck, it's probably a good 20 or maybe even 30 runs above par. Played all right, but just tricky to come in and hit from the off. Wickets will be key to defending this for us. First over and marking his run up out now is Connor Golding. you can't keep him out the action first ball worked to Cowdery at backwards point and he's only gone and thrown the stumps down unreal bit of fielding not sure about the celebration though And second over is Aaron Brown. He's back from Oz and returned with that absolutely shocking lid. A couple of tight overs from Aaron has Burgess Hill on 16 for one after four overs. Oh, okay. 
Connor just pulling his length back a touch and now a tight set from him as well. Two off it and now back over to Brownie with the last of the power play. Twenty-four for one from the first six, and that's a top effort from the opening bowlers to keep them at fours. We've got a change now, and a little bit of spin from Ben at first change. Come straight, though. Come straight. To <laughs> And it won't go down as his finest delivery, but no pictures in the scorebook, eh? Immediate impact from Lucking to get the Burgess Hill number three. Nice early call from that man, Mike Cowdery. And of course, he doesn't put it down. More spin and it's Rowan replacing Aaron from the far end. And a wicket in Rowan's first over two. That one fizzed in slightly quicker. I'm going to say he saw the batsman coming and dropped it in a touch shorter. That one crashes into the fluorescent stumps and the host in a spot of bother on 29 for three in the seventh. Forty-four for three from eleven. Another tight set from Benny. And next up is our first glimpse this season of George Cave. Joe throwing the ball around, and it's Matty Boyle next up to turn his arm over and throw down some leggies. So 67 for three after 15 and things are looking a little tricky for the hosts. They need 91 from the last five at a rate of 18 runs per over. To close it out at the death and back from his great spell at Cookfield last week is Tom Floyd. And Floyd is back in the wickets again with that LBW, our fourth wicket of the day. Burgess Hill really going to need something special from here now.
Joe smashes the stumps apart with the batsman well out his crease. A well-deserved wicket for Susan and the score now 81 for 5 from 17. Penultimate over of the match and it's given to Scotty Lenham. Not short of bowling options this year, Walker's given Scott a chance to turn his arm over with the game all but wrapped up. So 92 for 5 with 6 deliveries to go, Lenham can't quite hold on to that sharp return catch in the 19th. With the 20th, it's Tom Floyd to end proceedings today. Connor hangs on at mid-wicket to give Floyd his second. Really smart grab from Con, and it's all gone our way in the field today. A tidy performance all round. Rohan can't miss it seems and on that it's the end of the match with a comfortable 59 run win victory for the Bridges. A really good match today and our runs on the board proving to be too many for the hosts on this occasion. Credit must go to Mike Cowdery who was the stand up performer with a bat. He then took it out into the field with a run out first ball and it was a shared performance with the ball really. A couple of wickets spread round and everyone keeping it tight. Thanks to Burgess Hill for hosting and best of luck for the season. We progress and we take on Bognor Regis at home in the next round. The league starts next Saturday, but before then, we've also got footage of our rearranged National Cup fixture against Beckenham. That will be up on this channel shortly, so watch this space. Thanks as ever for watching, and we'll catch you next time. Bye-bye.